Hi, good afternoon. We're really happy to have you here with us, and especially today, um, during the day of uh, the Biden infrastructure announcement. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. Let's uh, let's hope they allocate enough for water at this point in time. <laughs> so you run the information technology department at DC Water. Can you just give us a sense of what you do and, and what kind of improvements you're seeing based on uh, the application of technology to the water mm -hmm. business? Yep. So we um, so our our group is about 60 uh, full time folks. Um, Complement it with you know, outside contractors, depending on the systems that we are implementing or, or building. Uh, we do buy a lot of software, uh, but we also build some specialty products and services that uh, aren't available in the marketplace. Um, uh, we have about uh, almost 1,200 employees that we service and probably another uh, seven to 800 contractors uh, use our systems. And we have everything from basic customer billing systems, accounting systems, payroll, personnel, to you know more complex uh, SCADA and process control systems that operate our uh, distribution conveyance and uh, plan operation stuff. Now that's fantastic, but you also wear another hat. You, you're the president of Blue Drop. What is Blue Drop, and uh, what's the value you provide as a business? I was, you know, fascinated by the the um, uh, description in your website where you talk about the pipe, pipe sleuth as one of the AI applications for your business. Yeah, so so Blue Drop is a wholly owned affiliate of DC Water, uh, not for profit. Its primary objective is to generate non ratepayer revenue to help uh, offset the impact of rate increases for our customers. Uh, we've got a fairly, fairly electric. Uh, set of products and services we sell, um, plant process IP, software IP that we sell. Uh, we lease cell tower space uh, on our facilities. Uh, we also sell our, our Bloom product, which is our, our biggest product line right now, which is our Class A biosolids, which is used as either a soil amendment or um, a fertilizer. But uh, our pipes product is a uh, product that came out of our operations area that it uses artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, I like to tell people it's facial recognition for sewer pipes. <laughs> uh, what it does is it takes a video uh, stream from a sewer scan and it does detection and classification of defects and anomalies in the pipe and scores the pipe um, based on what it's found. So uh, it, it actually replaces a, a highly manual, labor intensive, often error prone process uh, using technology. And you know, we built it um, for two reasons. One was to reduce the cost and increase the amount of assessments we could do. We were only assessing about 1% of our pipe a year. We have about 1,900 miles of uh, sewer and stormwater infrastructure in place. So we were only doing about 19 miles a year. Uh, we wanted to increase that, and we wanted to make better decisions around where we would invest uh, infrastructure dollars to do repair and replacement activities and or uh, do preventive maintenance and to extend the overall life of the pipe. So that's pretty interesting. And so uh, do you have any figures yet going from 19 miles to how much are you going to do this year? How much do you plan to do this year? So, so our current plan right now is 50 miles. Okay. Uh, so, so almost a little bit over double what we were doing in the past. Our goal, long term goal, is to do about 100 miles a year, uh, using a combination of of uh, new scanning technology in conjunction with our pipe sleuth product. Well, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, in terms of advanced technologies, I'm, I'm really interested in this conversation because water utilities are uh, being transformed pretty fast. So I'm trying to get a sense of, in terms of advanced technologies like AI, machine learning, are they beginning to have a sizable impact on uh, the way you all operate your business and the efficiency? I mean, it sounds like it sounds like that are like, you know, an example. Yeah, well, I think they have tremendous potential uh, as as a technology, not only to uh, improve decision making, but also reduce the cost of the operation as well. So um, 
you know, we, we have uh, AI and machine learning capabilities built into our pipe soup product, but we have other products that we're working on now, uh, uh, which incorporate machine learning and AI, but also are predictive in nature. So we're looking to predict uh, potential uh, water main breaks so that we can do uh, preemptive repairs or inspections uh, in, in an effort to eliminate that break. And that has two direct benefits. Number one, um, it avoids service interruption, uh, but it also is a lower cost approach to uh, improving the reliability of the system. Um, we're looking at additional techniques um, using imagery similar to the pipe sleuth to uh, potentially identify uh, stream bed erosion uh, in the stream beds. A lot of our sewer pipes run along stream beds because they're typically uh, gravity type systems. So we want to uh, see if we're going to use uh, AI or, or image, image technology to identify stream beds that are eroding. So we can go out and uh, prevent that before it undermines our pipe and causes a failure, which would then subsequently cause an overflow in the sewer. Um, and then eventually uh, in the whole customer service space. So being able to be more uh, proactive and managing customer service type uh, issues uh, by using data and analytics um, in, in the customer service field. We have a product called um, HUNA, which is our high usage notification alert system. So we take uh, our meter reading system, our AMI system, which is installed on all our meters in, in the district. We read uh, 135,000 meters uh, four times a day on average. Uh, and we analyze that data and we look for usage anomalies uh, at the account level. And we notify customers either by phone, text, or email about high usage conditions relative to their historical usage pattern. But we also can de detect continuous usage over a, period, over a number of hours so that we can uh, help people identify potential leaks in their property so they can take repair, uh, preventive uh, action to, to, or proactive action to go out and uh, identify where a potential problem might be. That's really interesting. You know, we do a lot of work overseas, and you know, one of the big uh, issues is unaccounted for water. And what's mm -hmm. interesting about unaccounted for water is that nobody really knows what it is. They just mm -hmm. kind of pick up a figure, and usually people say it's about 50 percent. With 25, you know, 50 percent of that is theft, and 10 percent of that is leakage. What, what kind of unaccounted for water figures do you have in the in the DC system? So we're we're in the range of 25 plus percent on uh, not what we refer to as non-revenue water. Okay. Right. Um, and and there's, a, there's a number of factors that contribute to non-revenue water. Some of it's known losses, so those are losses as a re result of a break or something like that. Um, they're unbilled usage for things like fire prevention um, or flushing operations, so we flush our pipes occasionally. Um, so you start with, you start with the gross volume of, of unaccounted for, you take out the knowns, and then we're using technology to try and identify where there may be uh, what I'll refer to as unmetered water. Okay. So these are conditions where meters are, are either uh, operating uh, incorrectly, they're degrading and they're not metering the water correctly, um, possible theft conditions where, where or bypass conditions where folks are bypassing the meter uh, and consuming water. So we're using, uh, we have a number of tools that we've built. We've got a, um, a balancing uh, application that, that has now taken our SCADA system, which tells us how much water goes into the system. We have our billing system, which tells us how much has been metered in the system. And then we balance those things uh, on a daily basis to try and identify areas of the district that have higher than normal con uh, amounts of unaccounted for water uh, or non-revenue water. And then we try and isolate in on the potential problems. Uh, by looking at, at meter consumption on individual meters, but then comparing those meters to their um, other customer classes. So uh, use codes, taking a look at all, um, um, like um, hotels and comparing individual hotels to hotels uh, or laundromats and things like that. People who have large 
large usage patterns and then comparing individual usage patterns to those larger patterns to try and identify the anomalies. Uh, that's interesting. So you know, one of the other things that's interesting to talk to you is that you, you've worked across a number of utilities, I understand, not just water, and across multiple markets. Mm -hmm. What do you see in terms of the lessons maybe and the, um, and the consistencies in terms of uh, providing services to people? Because that's what everybody in the infrastructure business is involved in. I think, I, I think one of the things we have to recognize is that we're in a 24-7 business, right? Um, you know, we don't we don't shut the water off. I mean, if you shut the electric off, it's okay for a short period of time. Shutting off natural gas is okay. Uh, water is the only utility to, in, that you can't occupy a facility for if you don't have water in that facility uh, and sewer services. So, so you know the the responsibility level increases exponentially as you go as you move through uh, the different types of utilities. Um, you know that said, electric has traditionally been more advanced from a technology perspective and the application of technology, uh, partly because of the contiguous nature of their systems. So you know you've got these large wide systems with multiple players, but all operating. Uh, collectively to supply large regions of the country, and that 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 really forced them to, to use technology to answer those questions. Uh, water is very, uh, is on the other side of that spectrum. There's many many small utilities. There's about 55,000 water utilities in the U.S. Um, and they all operate primarily independently. Many of them are owned by cities and things like that. So so the application of technology hasn't always been as rapid in water. Uh, okay. But I think across the, uh, across the spectrum, I think, you know, what we, we have to realize is that we, got, we had an operational requirement for 24-7, but we also now have a customer service requirement 24-7. And I don't think a lot of utilities have evolved to that level yet. Um, and, and the delivery mechanism for those services are dramatically different than they used to be in the past as well. While we have to continue to provide phone services to customers, many, many more customers want mobile uh, services, they want phone-based services or, or iPad-based services, even more so than web-based services. So, so being able to adapt to cut changing customer needs is important, but I think also creating a, a level of transparency with the public is also important for utilities. Because um, one of the biggest challenges really for all utilities in, in, in the country and infrastructure as a whole, you mentioned the Biden plan, uh, is really the investment that's required to uh, upgrade a lot of these systems. And we have some pipe in, in, in the ground that's 100 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and those things need to be addressed. And, and you know, like I said, we have 1,900 miles of uh, stormwater and sewer pipe. We have 1,300 miles of, of distribution pipe for uh, fresh water. But we're not the only one like that in the country. And those are going to be require huge investments. But, uh, and some of that investment's gonna have to come from the rate payer. Uh, it certainly all can come from the rate payer, but being able to communicate with the rate payer where those investments are needed and why they're needed and explaining them the value that's being generated from those investments is extremely important. Uh, we have a, we have a uh, link on our website, our open data portal, where we share a lot of data with the customers about the number of breaks, the location, um, number of sewer overflows uh, and various other statistics about our infrastructure so we can create context for customers so you know when we're making investments why we're making those investments. Yeah, my impression, I, I, I um, work in D.C., live in Virginia, my impression is that you all are very, very good at communicating with your customers, um, especially uh, in comparison to some of the other places where I'm involved. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, hey, let me ask you one other question. Um, one of the things that were, because I had another question for you, but I think you answered it in terms of what are the biggest challenges that water systems, municipal water systems face. But one of the things that strikes me as interesting is the fact that it seems that technology should allow us to uh, put up a, a measuring device on our taps we can see what the water quality is mm -hmm. before we 
drink it and, it, and nobody has that. Why is that? And is that something that's coming? Well, actually, uh, we actually have a prototype device that we built, which is the smart water fountain that uh -huh. we're trying to generate some interest in. Uh, that actually will give us the ability, that does give you the ability to monitor uh, water quality um, in real time and also track um, the performance of, of the filters. It's got a, it's, it's a combination of a, a sensor pack, a um, lead filter, and a, basically a computer that we install in the um, water fountain. And it monitors flow, it tracks the volume of flow, it tracks, and then it checks um, certain water quality measurements with the probes. And it has the ability to be uh, shut off if it fails a water quality test. Uh, and it alerts somebody on their cell phone that uh, somebody needs to go out and check the device and bring it back in service. So we've, we've been, um, We've, we've got a couple prototypes. We've got some uh, devices installed in a couple different locations in the district for some time now. And we're working with some other folks to uh, package it as part of a smart water fountain project that we have. Oh, that's phenomenal. We should get together and talk about that. I'd love to see that and maybe maybe we can feature that on, mm -hmm. uh, on in GVIP and, and see if we can mm -hmm. generate some interest. Hey, listen, Thomas, thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to uh, meet you virtually and I look forward to meeting you in person as soon as we are free to do that. Mm -hmm. Sounds great, Norman. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.